Well, um, looking back at Boise, they're really good. Got to give them a lot of credit. Um, tough, physical, veterans, great addition to the portal. And Omar Stanley, he could be potentially – I mean, they could have they could have legit two all-conference, first-team all-conference guys. Uh, Rice is always kind of underrated. Um, you know, so tough one. I thought we were really good in the first half. Uh, their size, physicality for sure overwhelmed us. We didn't hit shots. They did. Um, so we, we, we move on to Fresno and uh, excited for this last home game opportunity, see if we can get to 10 league wins um, and kind of get off this two-game losing streak. Not that it's extremely long by any means, but, um, you know, see if we can bounce back. So um, seniors, obviously Isaac, um, Jamal Baker, Jamal Mashburn, and Jalen House will all be uh, recognized. Uh, tomorrow before the game, uh, senior day is certainly not what it used to be. Uh, it's it's different, uh, substantially different, and that's not a knock on anybody. But all four of those guys have been great. I mean, Jamal Baker, uh, attitude, leadership, uh, has hit some big shots. Um, just that seasoned veteran that that we needed, and he's been phenomenal. Uh, Isaac Mushila, uh, hate the fact that he came here and hasn't played a lot. Um, you know, but he's always had an amazing attitude every single day, which I know is really hard, really, really hard. Um, and then Mash and House, you know, I mean, they, they're the reason uh, why we're sitting here at 21 wins after inheriting a six win program. Um, and they had a lot to do with it. And, um, you know, very, very uh, proud of just the progress that they've helped our program make in a short amount of time. So, um, have not talked to Mash uh, about what the future holds. We talked briefly yesterday about, hey, what, what do you want to say to the media, et cetera? He said, I haven't thought about it. I'll decide after the season. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So uh, grateful for all four of them. And uh, hopefully we can um, find a way to get a win. Some loose ends on a couple of the other seniors you do have on the roster. Is Nelly not walking and, and Mustafa not walking, both fourth-year guys? Not graduate. Um, so okay. if you graduate, you walk them. Okay. That, that doesn't necessarily mean then that they've made a decision. No, I haven't talked to anybody about any of that stuff. Um, the rule kind of in it, I don't know if it's a good rule or not, is if you graduate from New Mexico, we'll honor you on senior night. Or, uh, but those two guys are not on pace to do it. Every single player in our program can walk into my office after the season and say they're leaving. So there's no difference between the old guys, young guys, uh, new world we're living in. So, um, other than that, no. When you look at guys like Mash and House and how long you've been with them, what kind of growth have you seen these last few years to where they're at now? Yeah, I think uh, the one thing about both of those guys, and they can be maddening at times, they pour their heart and soul into it. And uh, that's why I have um, stuck with them on many times because they put in the work, they care. Um, you know, they've never had a bad practice. Effort has never been an issue. Um, they have show great leadership in a variety of ways. Jalen's really, really matured. Uh, Mash has been pretty similar since I've been with him. Um, you know, he's kind of a business-like type guy. Uh, but the both of them, I mean, there, there's there been so many just amazing memories. Um, you know, I remember walking in here in year one and the building's half empty. And, uh, you know, now we're... We're getting to a point where our last crowd was 15,000, and, and they deserve a lot of that credit. Do you – I don't know how much reflecting you've done on on the three years and decisions that are made. There are some people that got so frustrated at times with, with Jalen, um, some last year, and then they kind of saw when he was gone, what the team – what happened with the team and all that. This year, I know he's been injured, but Mash hasn't really found his shooting like he did – was doing his first two seasons um, and has had some bad games. Do you in any way um, think maybe you've – given them the benefit of the doubt to a detriment at all and, and kind of given them more rope. Um, I know Jalen on Saturday was two for 12 and, and Mash has had a couple of those games where you trusted them and left them in. Um, do you have any regrets about giving them that much leeway? Um, well, when you're a coach, you make a lot of decisions and you're never going to be 100% perfect. Uh, if I listened to people, I would have not played Mash in the Nevada game. I would have benched him if I listened to the people that are tweeting at me 
um, and yelling at me or whatever, I wouldn't have played him and he wouldn't have won the game for us on the road quad one win. So, you know, that's just part of uh, coaching is you've got to have some conviction. And um, I feel as those those two guys, it's not like they're bad players getting a lot of rope. These are two guys who have been all conference players every year they've been here. Um, you know, Mash was the scoring uh he won the scoring title last year, right? So, you know, it, it's it's it just depends on every guy. Um, but I, you just got to live with the decisions that you make. I think after twenty nine games, what are we twenty one and eight? And I really feel like we've only had one bad loss, and it was a bad loss. I understand that, but I think it's been a pretty darn good season, and hopefully, we continue to finish it the right way. Coach, is any of that fatigue? I mean, Jalen shots seem to. I thought Jalen shot good shots, uh, especially the threes. Um, I believe they're going to go in. I, I have confidence in him. I don't know if it's fatigue or not. I mean, it wasn't, you know, everybody's tired this time of year. Fresno State, what do you expect out of a five-game losing streak? Yeah, a team with nothing to lose, a team that's going to come in here and compete. They had Utah State beat. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've always been competitive. Now they've had some injuries. For sure, some injuries. Uh, who knows who plays on Wednesday? We don't know. They've had a little bit of a break, um, you know. But they're they're always going to compete their butts off, you know. So uh, our guys got to be ready. We know that. If they're playing a six man rotation, I, I know you, you don't know who's going to play, but essentially playing six man the last couple games, they've actually seemed to be as competitive as ever. Do you see them doing something different because they're so limited? That is actually maybe helping them a little bit. When you watch film, I think they're playing. Yeah, I just think they're playing freely. Um, Utah State game, they had one. Like that, that game was one, um, and then Brown hits a bank shot at the uh, um, at the buzzer. Um, I, and they're playing unique. It's almost like when you're playing a smaller lineup, that can cause issues for when you've played for two months against bigger guys. It's almost like these non-conference games you play where you got to adjust a little bit. So um, they've still got good talent, um, obviously. Some, you know, Wardo and Yap and um, Boachi. I mean, these guys are good players who are not playing, so uh, I don't know if they'll play tomorrow. But, yeah, they're just playing freely with nothing to lose. So fouls were uh, a problem against Air Force um, across the board. Uh, JT, it seems like uh, people, it wouldn't be hard. I mean, he won his ninth freshman of the week. Identify what a, uh, an important part of the team is. Is it... Harder to teach those guys in the post not to foul and how important they are to long term than it is a perimeter player. Well, I would say a lot of that has to do with uh, the physicality of that game. You know, Stanley and uh, Dagenhart were extremely physical. Um, we were trying to slap down and crowd those guys in the lane. We were a little bit too reluctant to do that in the second half. We were screaming at them to do it. It was a loud building, but. Uh, we need to protect them a little bit better. But some of that was just those two guys taking it to us. I mean, they're strong. They're physical. They're not shooting a lot of jump shots. They're ripping it by you, attacking the rim. Uh, you know, so you just got to collectively and individually do a little bit better job. Well, that's kind of what I mean is, like, it's one of the hardest things to do. It would seem, you know, especially he's one year removed from high school, and he's got guys sometimes four years older, you know, pump faking, pivoting, all that kind of stuff. So, like, is they, they weren't bad fouls or anything. It just shows how difficult it is. Yeah, it's the toughest this league's ever been, right, in the history of the league. Um, and there's been some transfer additions that have been great. And uh, I think Omar Stanley may be the best one in the league, you know, and um, he's physical and he's tough. And that JT did a good job on him. I th thought he was right there and, and competitive, but Stanley's a really good player. When you do have a team like Fresno State coming in, you mentioned they have nothing to lose. You're kind of playing with a desperation to try to knock you guys off with the pit. How do you make sure your players are coming in with the right mindset? Or what is the mindset you've seen lately? From Mindset's been great. It's been great. We, we had a bad loss at a bad time. One bad loss. That's it. Um, now, get to work. You know, when you lose, get, get back to work. And I think the practices have been great. Um, you know, coming here into this building, I felt there was certainly a tightness um, second half of Air Force, where there was a fear of, of not losing, for sure. You could feel it in the gym. Uh, so we can't have that. 
right? We got to go just attack the game and, and play freely and don't play under duress. And that's easier said than done because you're seeing every time you turn on a TV, last for in and all that stuff. Like, I mean, it's, but it's, it's a lot better than about 70% of college basketball. It's not even being mentioned on those things. So um, it's hard. It, it is stressful, uh, but just narrow your focus. About a week away from, well, a week away from the season ending in the conference tournament, some coaches awards coming out, um, postseason awards. You guys have a unique kind of setup where I think Donovan Dent is, is in line to, to be on one of the all-conference teams, maybe a Jalen House. Do you have any guys on your team that, you know, you think need a, some stumping for that, uh, for, for any of the awards? No, I, I don't, who cares? I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. I mean, that I, no, this is so very, very unimportant to me. I hope it's unimportant to them. Um, I think it's been a league. It's been a historic league, right? Um, whenever this league was founded, I don't know the exact date, but, um, just been so very, very competitive and there's been so many good players. Uh, you know, so I don't, that's not something I would ever do. I, I will then follow up with the specific on JT. Um, we know where he ranks in terms of weekly freshman of the week awards. There is another fantastic freshman in this league this year. And I'm curious, um, do you think JT deserves all conference consideration, not just for as a freshman, but all conference consideration? I want to ask you what team, but. Yeah, I mean, I think he's one of the better players in the conference. Now, I don't know, you know, I haven't done the old pick all the teams and this and that. So I, I don't know, you know, I mean, Obviously, from a freshman of the year standpoint, it's Deedon Thomas and JT. Uh, we don't know how UNLV is going to finish. We don't know how we're going to finish, right? So it, we're, we're consumed with giving out awards, I think, before the season ends. But you could justify either one of them. Um, I think Deedon is a really good player. I think JT is a really good player. Um, but, you know, I, we'll see in, in about a week, right? We'll see Saturday when the season ends. Do you feel like that's a distraction? In this day and age, there's all the awards that are given, all the tweets that are with young players keeping them focused on the task at hand of winning the next game, being in the present. I think, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of distractions, and, and the majority of them are on this thing right here. And uh, there's constantly stories being written before the story ends, before the story is over. Um, and it, it's just so very, very volatile. And... Um, we're getting a lot of exposure. Our league is, and uh, you're getting you're getting uh, player of the week, freshman of the week. You're getting all all of these things before the season ends, and it can be distracting. Absolutely, uh, social media, as I've talked many times, can be a huge detriment and distraction. Um, but when you're at a place that cares and you're at a conference that gets great exposure, there's kind of a tax you have to pay with that, you know. So um, it's better than being in a conference where nobody cares, being in a place where nobody cares. Uh, but welcome to the world of sports in, in, in the modern era, and it's that's not going away. Can I do one more uh, house and mash? Um, going back to... You can do whatever you want. Uh, whatever I want. Um, yeah. Going back to when you recruited them, I think for our purposes, house was the first to announce on social, but mash, the second you weren't there, I know his dad calls you and says, we're, we're going wherever you end up. And... Um, those two guys being the first two of, of the building blocks, the, the, or the first two building blocks, was it coordinated in any way? Like, how how did that kind of work out where those were the first two guys? Like, I think we kind of know the MASH story, but maybe how did how did you get house right off the bat? Uh, yeah, it wasn't coordinated. I don't think they knew each other, so that was more a coincidence that they were sons of um, NBA fathers. But, um, you know, when we got here, it was really challenging because – the world was still shut down and I wanted to give the current guys a chance. I didn't want to walk in and just run everybody off. I didn't want to do that. I didn't think that was necessary. I, I wanted to be able to work these guys out. So whenever I got the job around April, whatever it was, I really took the month of April, did individual instruction with them, got to know these guys to see who was a fit, to see who's going to class, to see who's showing up at study hall on time. You know, was it a, talent deal was it a culture deal you know I wanted to be able to give them the benefit of the doubt to see what I have I you know because you don't you don't want to go into a situation and just watch the film and say oh he stinks he's not. like no I wanted to be able to see what I had 
And then when I when I evaluated it, I thought, okay, you know, certainly we need to go get some guards. Um, we needed to get everything, you know. But um, Jalen was a guy we wanted to recruit Arizona uh, hard. We thought it was natural, and um, you know, he was at Arizona State and had moments of really more defensive moments that were amazing. And I remember the comment that Bobby Hurley said to me. He said uh, he could change the game defensively. He can. And uh, I just thought it would be a, a good um, counter to Mash, who was maybe a little bit more offensive-minded at times. And uh, again, although people may be frustrated right now, if you take a step back, we're sitting at 21 wins. We're top 30 in the net. Uh, we had, what, 22 last year, uh, have been ranked both years. Like, there's so many positives that Mash and House brought to the table. Well, the two of them, too, in, in just three years, are, are going to be top 15 scoring. Mash is top 10. Um, and career leaders and steals for stuff like that. Like, it's not like they, they haven't accomplished on the court stuff either. I mean, they've, they've had pretty decorated careers in just three seasons. They have, yeah. Yeah, I think they've, um, as I said before, you know, I trust them. I believe in them. Um, they work their butts off. They have never had a bad practice. It's never been a, an issue of effort. Um, and they've poured their heart and soul into this program and got the train back on the tracks. Who, who knows how this season's going to end? But as I said before, there are not a lot of programs who are in our position right now. Would we like to be a little bit better? Of course we would. We, we, the Air Force, that was a bad loss. But there's a lot of teams that have had bad losses. Maybe it was earlier in the year and you forget about it. You know, I remember Kentucky, not, not to bring up – I remember they lost a bye game. It was a UNC Wilton because I was watching KJ. So, I mean – Everybody kind of goes through that, um, but I think overall, those guys have helped uh, turn the program in a very positive way, and hopefully we can finish strong and see where this thing takes us. So you are going through senior night tomorrow night. Let's start off with what does that mean for the future? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just focusing on senior night tomorrow, um, and we'll go from there. I mean, I'm just trying to stay in the moment, stay here, stay in the present. Uh, you know, which is always puts things in perspective for me and for everybody. So um, I'll be the first one to graduate in my family from college. So that's that's what I'm that's what I'm focused on. That's, that's a big accomplishment for me. So. How does it feel to, to have that accomplishment? Um, it's cool. I mean, it's cool. Like, I, I mean, my dad has all the accolades, you know, what I mean, all the NBA stuff. So it's good to get one thing under my belt, you know, so and I hopefully I keep racking them up against him. So. Uh, but it is a good accomplishment, definitely, because school has been hard. You know, school has been, uh, you know, learning lessons and throughout each year. So uh, to get through that and to graduate and walk is just always a big accomplishment. So excited. What, what's your degree going to be in? Uh, so it's in liberal arts, but I took plenty of communications and English classes because of my ability to write and, and communicate and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, we'll see where that takes me. Um, I, I enjoy writing, I enjoy communicating, I enjoy speaking and stuff like that. So, you know, who knows? Who knows where that avenue leads me, so. Have you reflected at all? I mean, it is senior night. I know you're trying to stay in the present. You just said that. Mm -hmm. But uh, senior night kind of presents an opportunity to reflect. And it's been a three-year kind of run here with you and Jalen. And, and regardless of what your future is in the immediate for next year, um, Jalen, is we know, is going to be done. The mm -hmm. two of you kind of uh, were... As every bit as much as Patino was, the the three year period right now, the mm -hmm. I guess rejuvenation of this program, yeah. you guys were at the forefront. Have you thought about you know your guys' role and you and Jalen playing together these last three years? Um, I mean, I've thought about it a little bit, but I mean we've just gone through the fight together and we've gone through the ups and downs, the losses, the wins, the you know the the twitters, all that. We've gone through that together, so. And we've, we've each had each other's back. And there's, you know, that, that's a guy that I can say that that's my brother for life. And, um, you know, after basketball, I can definitely see, you know, whatever, like, we, we get together, whatever careers we're doing, and still catch up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, he's, he, he's someone that's family. You know, it's bigger than basketball, man. It's like, you know, we learned so much on this journey. And, you know, it's been tough throughout the three years. You know, it's been a rebuilding process. And, um and I think we've accomplished a lot of things that we didn't expect to accomplish uh, quickly. So um, I'll reflect, you know, when the season's over, but we got practice in about 20 minutes. So I got to focus on that. They got scout team up. They're ready to go, and we're ready to get better and be Fresno. What do you expect out of Fresno? Um, I mean, 
you know, they, they got a good point guard in Isaiah Hill. I think he's like top seven in assists. Um, you know, so he's a terrific player. Um, you know, I, I always like playing against Fresno. I mean, they're always a defensive oriented team. So and I like playing against good defense. So um, they're good. I mean, they're good. They're good. And you're, and you're healthy at this point in the season. I know your thumb has bothered you a little bit. I mean, it's been a challenging season for you yeah. in so many respects, I'm sure. But uh, mm-hmm. you're, is the team pretty healthy right now? Are you, are you healthy? So, um. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, what I can be. Uh, you know, I'm available. So that's what I'm blessed to be. So. Saturday was a game that, you know, in a vacuum, going on the road to the first place team that was favored and losing isn't the worst thing in the world. But it, it seems like, I don't know, because of the week by um, and you'd lost the previous week to Air Force and you guys are sitting on a bubble that you guys were a little bit further in, you know, just two weeks ago. Like, it just seems like it's been a while. It seems like you guys are kind of going through a rough stretch right now, even though it's only a two game losing streak. But I'm curious how that locker room and, and how you're mindset is kind of taking where the team is right now yeah i mean we're good we're good i mean we're 100 percent good i mean it's part of life you're gonna go through tough stretches in life so you're gonna have to bounce back and figure it out and communicate and uh you know find solutions find ways to uh, get yourself up and ready to go for you know days that are sometimes hard and some days are easier than others so um you know we're good i mean we're we're, uh, we're not worried at all or we're not anywhere in a panic mode or anything, we got to get this win for sure. But um, we're in a good position, and we know that when we're right, we're right, and we're gonna take this day of practice and have a great day of practice, and we're just gonna um, take it day by day. When you look at a team like Fresno State coming in, they don't really have anything to lose mm-hmm. um, this year where they're at in the conference, and every team comes in here with desperation to win at the pit, but especially mm-hmm. the especially this late in the season. How do you look at this team or this game coming up, knowing that they're gonna come in? This is the most important game of the year for us. I mean, I mean, and we've said that about, you know, a multitude of games throughout the year. But I mean, this is the most important one. I mean, we're at home. Um, you know, they have again, like you said, they have nothing to lose. So they're just going to go out there and play freely. Um, Isaiah Hill, who's he can create and, you know, get others involved. I mean, he's, he's great at that. So he's been doing that his whole career. So we can't let a guy like him get going who's ahead of their snake, ahead, ahead of the snake of their team. Um, and we just got to play with a sense of urgency and a sense of desperation because we're, we're still playing meaningful games in, in basketball and there's like 300 teams that aren't so we're in a blessed position right now so. do you feel like as a leader on a team you have to make sure everyone is on that same page or do you feel like everyone already is kind of like that with that same mindset with that sense of urgency uh with the role that i've taken this year i definitely have to you know stay in a communicative space with that and making sure everybody's good and stuff like that and um you know just holding everybody accountable and just making sure um you know, people aren't in their feelings or, you know what I'm saying, like just worried about the wrong things and stuff like that. So I, I, that's kind of been my, my role this year, and that's what I'll continue to, to exploit. So. You're the guy here, so I'll ask um, the seniors. Um, you already talked about Jalen. Uh, Isaac, something you can say about him and, and then Baker too, but something mm-hmm. you can say about what you've learned playing with Isaac Michelle this year. Yeah, uh, man, he plays hard, man, every possession. Um, and he's a he's an undersized like four that can kind of play the three, so you can kind of put him in, in spots and he can figure it out. And that's what I like about him is you can put him anywhere in the game, and you know he, he has a great attitude about things. He's a great kid, so wherever he plays professionally, they're gonna get a gem out of uh, out of Isaac and and JB as well. I mean he's 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 dealt with so many things throughout his career as far as knee injuries, and um, you know he's he's I think what the second oldest player in college, so. Yeah. Man, he's he's ha- he's got a lot of experience under his belt. So, um, you know, I've I've talked to him about a lot of things. I mean, we we I, I can pick his brain about stuff. Um, he's just someone who's very solid, very solid, very laid back dude. But you know, when you talk to him, he's gonna say some real stuff, and uh, that's what I can appreciate about both of those dudes.